Hi guys, welcome back. This is Crystal with Emerson Aurora Design. And today I'm going to show you how I did this horror paint drips tumbler using glow pigments, paint drips, smoke effect, and a water slide. I'm using this new water slide paper that was sent to me by Hippo. Um, it is a water slide decal paper that you can print in your inkjet uh, printer. And I found an image that I really liked. These are all different horror faces from several horror movies that I really love and I printed this on this paper directly and then coated the image three times with my clear enamel from Rust-Oleum. I was really impressed with how this paper printed. I didn't have any cracking in the dark colors like I have in previous water slide paper that I've used. So I was really happy with that and I'm going to go ahead and lay this on my 30 ounce uh, skinny tumbler from the Stainless Depot that has been prepped, sanded, and painted white. I'm going to go ahead and lay this out in one, um, one solid piece. Um, so it's going to be like a little mini wrap on this tumbler. You, I did not epoxy this tumbler first. It's just been dried, say, say it, um, I can't talk today, guys. Dried spray paint. I'm going to add a little bit of water to the base of that tumbler to allow that water slide to slide on nicely. I was being really careful because I didn't want to rip my water slide. Um, it wasn't quite, quite ready to come off the backing yet. Since this is a larger piece, it does take a little bit more soaking. But here I was able to kind of coax that off of the back of the paper with no issues. This water slide paper is fairly thick and it is really easy to work with. I was, I'm very happy with it. So I'm just rolling it on there and trying to get it matched up as best I can. It does have a little bit of an overlap. Um, the way that I measure my water slides, I always allow for a little extra overlap. I'm gonna go in with my paper towel here and just gently dab the water slide and work out any air bubbles or water bubbles that may be trapped below the water slide and give it a good wipe. If the water slide peels up like it just did, you can always add a little bit more water and go from there. Be really gentle with this part because that water slide can still move around while it's still damp. So I'm still just working out the little bubbles that may have been captured underneath and drying that water slide off as best I can. And I'm going to use my little blade here to just trim that little, uh, overhang. I am a little impatient and I should have waited until this was more dry. However, I'm impatient and that's how I am. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, cut that overhang where I think is pretty even, but you're going to see that I kind of cut it crooked no matter, I'm going to fix this um, later on and you'll see how I do that. I'm going to um, fix that little area with some alcohol ink later. So the water slide went on beautifully and I'm very happy with it. And I'm going to let this dry for a couple hours before I do anything else to it because I want that completely dry before I epoxy this tumbler. Here you can see the image is a little clearer. There's a little bit of everybody on there. So now it is completely dry and I'm going to go ahead and address that seam. So I'm going to fill in that seam using black alcohol ink from Let's Resin. I'll leave a description um, this product in the description box below came in a box of several colors I purchased on Amazon. So I'm just going to apply some black alcohol ink directly to a small makeup sponge and just fill in that area there where there's a white in the seam. Just gently do a dabbing motion and fill in that white area. Once epoxy is over this, the lines will disappear and it'll look like you didn't even do anything to the tumbler. Now I do know that I am going outside of the borders of the top and bottom and that's fine. That'll be covered up in just a little while. 
Once that's dry, I'm going to go ahead and try a new technique. I'm going to try the smoke effect technique. I'm taking an old butter knife that I do not use for food anymore, and I'm using a candle. I'm just touching the butter knife close to the wick, creating a smoke, and holding my tumbler above that to um, catch it. <laughs> It took me a few minutes to get a gro the groove into this. Um, it's the first time I've tried this technique. So just be careful when you're working with flame. And of course, I'm not going to use that butter knife again for food. It'll now be my craft butter knife. <laughs> just remember that knife is going to get hot, so be careful. And just keep going until you like the effect. I know this is a bad angle. I apologize. It's hard to see. But you can still see that the smoke is catching on that um, painted surface. I don't believe this would work if it had been epoxied first. This is just a spray painted base. Don't forget the bottom. And I'm going to do this to all the white areas of the tumbler, but not my decal. You can see here, um, it looks really neat. There are little speckles and spots, and that's fine. It's not supposed to be perfect. It's a horror tumbler. And we'll cover up that black alcohol ink later. I'm going to take this outside, and I'm going to spray this down and seal my water slide and the smoke effect. I'm using my Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel, and I'm going to give it two good coats of spray with it drying in between each coat to seal those in. Let that completely dry before you put it on your turner. Now we're at the turner and we're going to do some epoxy. I'm going to mix in a little bit of my glow powder pigment directly into my epoxy and I'm actually spreading it all over the decal and the whole tumbler. This was an experiment. I hadn't done this over a decal before. I usually do it under a decal but I really wanted to add another layer of this um, to this tumbler. I wanted it to glow, so it's especially creepy. And it does work. I wasn't sure if it would, but it does. And the glow powder really doesn't take away from that decal. It just kind of blends in. And you'll see here in a minute, I'll show you with my uh, UV light. I'll activate the glow, and then you'll see it. This is my UV nail light that I use. I'm just um, activating the glow powder, and I'll show you here in a second how cool it glows. Creepy, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm going to let that cure for 24 hours, and this is after the epoxy is completely cured, and now I'm going to go in and do my drips. I just took that acrylic paint that I purchased at Michael's, it's Artist Loft, and I did water it down a bit because it's a very thick acrylic paint. I'm just scooping the paint up in little sections here with my fan brush and just allowing that paint to drip down completely to the bottom of the tumbler. This ended up working out really well, I was happy about it. Um, scooping up the paint that's been watered down and just letting it kind of angle down and drip <laughs> worked better than I had hoped. Now this isn't like a regular epoxy drip of course, this is with paint, but I was just going for the blood kind of drip effect. Since this paint is watered down, it is on the lighter red color side and so we'll have to go in and add another layer later. Make sure you have something underneath to catch the paint. I'm using this little honeycomb silicone, um, I think it's a pot holder underneath to catch the paint so it isn't pooling. But I, and I'm perfectly okay for it covering the bottom of the tumbler like it is. You'll see it um, in a couple of the clips. Once that's dry, I flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing to the top and essentially have the drips coming from the top of the um, decal. So it looks like blood's dripping up and down, if that makes any sense. I hope you guys can get an idea of what I'm doing with the angle of my camera here. Um, I do get a closer angle in just a minute. 
So just keep going around and um, for, since this is a blood effect, I'm okay with that kind of being a little messy. It's a drip, it's okay. <laughs> I'm going to let that dry completely. And if you need any extra paint drips or hat, want those drips to go down, just scoop up some more paint and add it to the top. And it follows the same um, kind of drip pattern because it will follow where the previous drips um, were laid down, if that makes sense. <laughs> Here's a closer angle here. It's a little hard for me to get a good angle with my wrist though to do this, but I wanted to show you guys how the paint drips will follow the previous drips um, if you want to add another layer. Just take your time. Like I said, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's supposed to look like paint drips. And as you can see, I didn't have a straight line. I didn't want a straight line. I want it to look like the paint, the blood's almost bubbling over and dripping. So that dried, and since the paint was watered down, kind of, it didn't really cover the decal as much as I wanted, and it almost had a pink look about it. So I'm going to use the paint directly out of the tube. I'm not watering it down this time. And I'm just using a thin paintbrush, and I'm just going to go ahead and paint a second layer, or in this case, maybe a third layer of the full strength paint. Now I wasn't sure by doing this if after I epoxied those um, brush, um, brush strokes would show, but it turns out that the epoxy, once it's over this paint, you can't even really tell that it has been painted with a paintbrush. So I was really happy about that. I just wanted to conceal those straight edges and make sure that they weren't seen through the paint, and I wanted it to have... Um, just a thicker consistency. I wasn't too happy with the thinness of the paint, if that makes sense. And I know it looks like the paint is kind of a bright red, but once it dries, it's more of a deep red, more um, like blood. So I'm just trying on the drips to go in one straight motion so I don't have too many paint bristle marks. Uh, but ultimately it didn't even really matter. And this actually turned out really well. I was happy with the, the outcome of this. I had a little paint smudge there, so I'm just camouflaging it. That's what's forgiving about these type of tumblers. Um, it, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's supposed to look like um, kind of gory blood. <laughs> Do you guys like ha um, Halloween? Do you like scary movies? I feel like the whole month of October, all I do is watch scary, creepy ghost stories. Those are my favorite.
I'm going to do the same to the top of the tumbler and just keep going. You can see around the top of the rim of the tumbler that the, the blood, it isn't really blood, honestly, guys, it isn't, <laughs> that the paint pooled and it made a nice line along the top rim. I really was happy with that. It looks like it was soaked into whatever surface this may have been laying on, which it did. Um, that honeycomb mat really helped with that. I found those on Amazon. If you would like um, to purchase some, I can link those in the description box below also. They come in really handy for you, um, epoxy molds and magnets and just keeping um, any drips away from anything that you're um, putting epoxy on. So I did epoxy over that layer once it was completely dry and this tumbler has been um, epoxied it's cured and it's been sanded. So now I'm going to apply my um, my letters, my words. This white vinyl was giving me um, a headache. The backing likes to stick to the letters, but it was cheap. <laughs> so I found a creepy font on Defont. Um, this one is like Blood Drips, I think it's called. I'm not sure completely. I was just looking for Halloween fonts, and that's what came up. And I am doing a double layered um, effect here with my my words. Um, this print and cut, guys, I have a hate-hate relationship with print and cut vinyl. This is um, printable sticker paper, glossy. I purchased on Amazon. I've purchased several different brands. I'm trying to find one that I like. Printable vinyl is my arch nemesis. <laughs> it's always so thin, and my Cricut, half the time it doesn't even cut right for the printing cut. It drives me crazy, but you can see how chewed up my, um, <laughs> my uh, paper is there because it cut right through the whole thing, even the backing. And then, of course, it didn't cut some of the little curly cues of the font, but... I made it work. It's okay. Like I said, this is supposed to be like a gory, scary Halloween tumbler. So I was okay with some of the letters being kind of janky. <laughs> but um, if you guys have used a print and cut or a printable vinyl, printable adhesive vinyl um, and that you really love and that you've had good luck with, um, let me know in the comment box because I am still shopping for some that I like. I hate purchasing these packs and then I'm like, ugh, I hate them. I just want to throw them out, but I use them because I'm not going to waste any money. <laughs> any advice is welcomed, guys. It's hard to see the um, letters, what they're cut with. I found a pattern um, that I like that I uploaded. It's like black background with bloody handprints. So that's what that is on the Sweet Dreams. Um, the dark portion is black with bloody handprints. It doesn't show up really well here. So I came up this with this little saying. It's um, Sweet Dreams If You Dare because it is a horror film. Um, cup and you know my it never fails I like to watch scary movies at night with the lights off and no one else here with me and I don't know why I do that because then I'm all creeped out once I go to bed <laughs> anytime I apply a quote that's cut out intricately or use the printable vinyl I definitely am gonna seal this and since this was printable vinyl, I'm going to use my Rust-Oleum clear, clear Spray Enamel again over this before I even put this back on the turner for epoxy. It cuts down on bubbles that like to seep up from underneath the um, vinyl. And it does help because sometimes this print or the printable vinyl, even if it's glossy like this one, 
the um, epoxy seeps down and causes wet spots. So I really recommend sealing your printable vinyl and your vinyl before um, epoxying. I usually use my Crystalac to seal, but since that's wet, a wet, you know, kind of sealer, I was afraid it would leave wet marks on my printable vinyl. So that's why I'm using my spray for this one. Either one works. So there we go. And there's my crystal clear enamel that I'm going to um, do two layers of. So I do go in with two full coats of epoxy and 24 hours later, here we are. Let me know if you guys like this. Thank you for staying to the end. This tumbler kind of, it was fun, but it also was a headache. <laughs> so um, let me know if you guys like this. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing. That would be wonderful. Give me a thumbs up. And look for some of the links in the description box below to the products that I used. And here's the tumbler glowing somewhat. It's not completely dark down there, but I think it looks pretty neat. Thank you guys. Have a wonderful October and happy crafting.